As you may already know, ElderWorks is a not-for-profit organization supporting any older adult or senior who has aging questions, needs referrals for assisted living, memory care, home care agencies, or other senior housing options. Our complimentary services are always available to you. Just give us a call at 855-462-0100 or visit our website, elderworks.org, E-L-D-E-R-W-E-R-K-S.org where you'll find hundreds and hundreds of articles and supportive material to help you through the aging process. Again, thank you for taking aging seriously and planning for your future needs. Enjoy ElderWorks Expo. Well, thanks for everybody being here. I'm Lancer Everett from the Rolling Notes Police Department. I'm the Crime Free Housing Coordinator. And uh, this is about Senior Safety Wage Protection Center. And as you can see, people are training me, so it's a little bit of a pressure, but that's my mom and dad right there. Trust me, they're, they're going to be the most vicious people. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing I'm going to say or do today is going to work out. <laughs> so we'll start here. Oh, we start with the video. Music. Make you an automatic victim. If everybody knows where to store the anonymous police department. You wasn't given up in the back. So uh, this is a new. We're, this is actually pretty good to be the last uh, presenter of today, because this is a brand new uh, thing I put together. I've never done it before. So either it's been 20 minutes or four hours. I can't tell you. But you might kind of hear early. So one of the things that um, I think is always kind of a mistake that people do is they want you guys to take this seriously. So. We don't use scare tactics per se, but we don't emphasize really what's going on. So in Cook County in 2020, there's 5.17 million residents. Type one and type two crimes are, um, are defined by Congress. The FBI collects this information. In that year, it was 130,850 type one and type two crimes. Crimes against people, crimes against property. Chains of being a victim for anybody living in Cook County in 2020 is 0.25%. You're elderly because you're 17 percent of the population, which are four percent. So, at the bottom line is the odds of you being a, crime, a victim of a crime is almost impossible. But we always emphasize the other side of it in order to like make you pay attention and, and take it take it seriously. Still take it seriously. We want to lower crime. We want to lower the victimization. But you live in a safe place. You live in a good area. Keep that mind first. This lecture is going to cover physical crime and prevention. Second, elder schemes, frauds, and criminal acts in the third mental preparedness, um, which is kind of always the forgotten state to do. It's a mental and yeah, emotional and cognitive state. So physical crime. Remember, first and foremost, you're responsible for your, your safety and your loved one's safety. Don't give away your agency. One of the mistakes in community policing that had went forward in the late 80s, early 90s, is we kept saying, don't do anything, call 911. Don't do anything, call 911. So what a lot of them we're seeing now is neighbors don't communicate with each other anymore. They don't come with each other. So you're responsible for your physical safety first. We come late to the process. All right, we're the ones after something's bad or it's got out of your control. But you can do things in order to make yourself safe before you can get there. Exercise, be in shape, be the best you know physical that, that you can. Everybody's got limitations, especially if you get older. But there's always uh, trainers that, do, that work with um, senior citizens, and they can work on different diet elements. Take self-defense classes. I asked around, and every dojo that is around the area has senior classes, where they take in mind your capability, give you kind of different tactics than normally would instruct. I'm a big fan of uh, concealed carry. All right, an 80-year-old little lady is going to win. It's a tournament every time. Pepper spray, good knife, stun gun, stun cake, and then I was going to tell us to stuff up, that was kind of cool. Uh, one to two pounds off weight at first, you might see that one away again. Research where you're going. So if you're going to a new place, you don't know the safety of it, you can always use the internet. You can call the police, it's not an emergency number. If you went to Rolling Meadow to say, hey, I want to go to the Dunkin' Donuts, we'll take you to the same Dunkin' Donuts. Not the uh, less. You can make recommendations, but we can instruct you. Call the Chamber of Commerce. They're always willing to tell you different things.
it's great with information. But the bottom line is, I'll right away. If you're fit, you have the tools in order to protect yourself, you've got the mental mindset to protect yourself, you're going to be in a much better position than if you're just going to show up and just have to So we're going to lower the risk. So very little chance of being a victim, a victim is lower even more than it already is. So when you go someplace, don't immediately park with your way. You got time. I mean, most of you, I'm assuming most everybody in this room is retired at me. That's a great place to be. You've got the extra time to make a couple laps around the parking lot. Look what, looks what's happening in the parking lot. Look what, look what that blue light emergency lights is. They got this system. Look to see who's hanging around. You got people kind of randomly not doing anything. That's kind of a sign that maybe you should go to a different part of the parking lot or kind of keep an eye on them for a second. Kind of see what they're doing. Look for places to escape or hide from. Look for people sitting in cars on the perimeter just doing nothing. So just kind of space and just take a lap and see what's happening. Take your time to look around. So when you arrive, keep the jewelry home. It makes it nicer for your and then when you go out for parties. Don't give yourself an automatic door. Don't show up with a Rolex watch or you know, 10 diamond rings or whatever you're doing. If you're doing running errands or you do some basic things, keep that at home, keep that safe, keep it nice. Leave cash at home. Um, so nobody uses cash anymore. It's very easy to cancel your credit card. Checkbooks, cash, very simple. Credit card, all right, credit card goes with the member that they took it from you. Immediately call the bank and cancel what you need to use. Keep purses and wallets to a minimum. Cram full, like, you know, the wallet that this big. They will, um, our, our guys occasionally will buy little things and wait one, see what's coming out of the wallet, see what's coming out of the purse. What they're attracted to is big purses with a lot of stuff in it, big wallets with a lot of stuff in it. Those are all things a lot of cash. <coughs> Keep medications at home. This is kind of a newer thing. So because of the opioid epidemic, um, heroin is less expensive than oxycontin and things like that. We're having the guys rip purses or our uh, commit crimes when they see pill bottles in the hope that that pill bottle is an opioid. You can sell those for between $20 or $40 a pill. So if you don't have to take that medication, leave it at home so they, they don't try to get it. So they think it could be something like that. The same with cell phone. Cell phones are super expensive now. Everybody's got them. There are ways to crack them now. Just if, uh, if you're using your cell phone, it's just when you pull in, get the cell phone out of view, leave it out of view as long as you possibly can, and then uh, try not to use it in the store if you can because people will be wandering around looking at, looking at older people because they see you guys as a potential target. And I just leave it out. Shop with the button. Make it a The more people, the better it is. Kind of like our little old grannies in the thing. One little granny probably wouldn't be a problem, but because there were five of them, they weren't. So, work in numbers, don't isolate yourselves. And don't park and linger. Your, your car is a problem. So, when you pull in and you stop, it gives people time to interact with you. All right, take your car, take your keys, take your things. Same thing when you return to your car. So, you have your stuff ready to go. Park and get away from the car. It's going to make you much less of a target. Considerations. So with physical safety, if it comes down to your stuff for your life, obviously your stuff is the most important thing. Decide that ahead of time. Because your precious item, you're going to automatically want to fight for. So decide before you leave this room that, hey, no matter what the value of it is, it's replaceable. Even if it's irreplaceable, you're not replaceable. So let it go. Drop your stuff in the room. Don't be compliant. So, okay, there's to give you money, toss your wallet, and go and run the other way. Don't make the encounter lasting a lot longer than it absolutely possible. Younger attackers no rules. I don't care who he is. Under Schwarzenegger's eyes, ears, and nose break just like everyone else's. And when we rip their ears off, I think they're going to be less, less inclined to continue to encounter with never will, He never willingly go with the defender in a sick location as a killing floor. That's what they prepare to have to do to you today. If it, if it comes down to it, die you. Die in the parking lot, die in the account. Because that next that next place, just read up on all the cities here, including the plug, it's not going to go well. Noise is your friend. Just screaming is going to attract attention. Being loud, making a lot of noise, making the encounter because they're going to try to be quiet. Don't be quiet. Never be out of the fight. So this is a famous case where the FBI had to completely redo their tactics. 
So the two guys were robbing a bunch of uh, Miami, Miami banks back in 1986. They surround him at the final, big gunfight. One of the bad guys caught a ramp, center mass to the heart, fatal. He, after that shot, he killed two more guys before he died. If it comes to it, you have four to six minutes of working time in this area. So, if it comes to it, stay in front. If nothing else, go in. I'm going to tell you 100 pounds of uneven uh, distributed weight, not complying, you're going to get yourself some things. So, if nothing else, go in, be not compliant. Use your environment and improvise. One of the things uh, people forget is that dumpster. So, dive in a dumpster. You know, make it as make it as unpleasant as an encounter as possible. You know, keep the dumpster can be in between you and that. Look around, use what you got to your advantage. Criminals love the least amount of effort within the encounter, the least amount of effort, the least amount of time you can do. And typically they're smart. So the smart criminals become lawyers and politicians, and the dumb ones commit crimes. <laughs> Since, since I'm going quick, one of my favorite stories was I pulled over a DUI in Midnight's and I saw that car door flex, uh, fly open and I thought I was going to get a foot pursuit. And very slowly, the guy gets out of the driver's seat, walks his way around the car, opens up the passenger door, gets in and suddenly done. All on camera. So I go walking up and I'm like, uh, hey, what's going on? He's like, the driver just ran away. I think he's drunk. <laughs> They're not smart, is the bottom line. So, the more you make them work, the longer you make them work, the better. Don't forget, in life and death, I didn't say your vehicle can provide safety inside it, under it, or by keeping between you and the jacker. Once again, we're trying to increase distance, increase time, increase all. As a weapon, same with you, are you using any kind of weapon, you have the right to defend yourself. Your car can be used that way, but it'd be wrong. Like it's just a kid saying hi, you run him over, you're not gonna like how this could work for you. And finally, remember most of you just look for low rate of um, In car accidents a lot, you get people who get hurt, they immediately freeze up and like, we can't get anything from them. Like, okay, your arm's broken, we'll take care of it. But I need a driver's license, I need an insurance card, I need to find out what happened. And they're completely frozen. In a physical attack, that's the worst thing that you can do. So if something goes wrong, stay in the phone. You know, I don't like the guy pulled the heart. You still got operation. Make sure you keep doing it. So, so let's talk about Ellis uh, frauds and everything else. <clears throat> so, Bruce burglaries. These are the big problem that really matters. So, it's when the criminals pose as police, public works employees, delivery people, uh, anything, anything to basically get you open. The whole point of it is this: you open your door, they distract you. A second guy goes through the back door, side door, sledding door, something like that. And they go and they rummage your stuff, and then they both leave. The average one, typically less than 10 minutes, we're finding they're all about three minute encounters. There are people specializing this, they keep you talking, they keep you moving. The whole point of it is they know where you hide your stuff, they're going to take it and they're going to And because it's so quick, and they're wearing masks because of COVID, it's almost impossible. As they come in vehicles with stolen plates or stolen cars, we rarely, rarely solve these. What can be done is you do that. So, what do you do? There's almost never a reason for a stranger to enter your home. Now, so if you look through that window or peephole or whatever you have to be able to look out in front of them, and you don't know who that person is or why they're there, that is the first sign not to open the door. Second, we don't just show up randomly. So, one of a couple things with police that are unique is we will canvas. So, if there's a burglary here, we're going to knock on all the surrounding things to see if anybody heard something during the time frame that we've established the burglary. But, don't trust them. So, if I sh now you know me now, but if somebody else shows up at your front door in a police uniform and you didn't call 911 and you're not the victim, tell them to wait a minute, call them, dispatcher will tell you if it's a real it's not a real police officer, that's a problem. If it is a real police officer, no 911 dispatcher's not going to be upset with you. The police officer at Wayne Field is not going to be upset with you. Because we want to lower these. These are, these are really awful things. 
You didn't order it, don't answer the door. Keep the backside garage sliding doors locked. These are crimes of opportunity. They'll go door to door and door to door until they get somebody opens up the door and they find one where the guy can get through the garage or the selling that sort of something. And they'll go through 100 homes before they find their way home. So don't give them the opportunity to do that. Cash. And so they always go to dresser drawers, night tables, desks. Those are the big three for them. Mm -hmm. That's where almost everybody has their stuff. Have your very valuable stuff somewhere else. Safety deposit box is always a good idea. <coughs> but you want to keep in your house, oatmeal, empty oatmeal container, anything that is not nice. The kitchen's great because there's a ton of little things in it and you can hide your stuff a little bit. And then forget where you put it. <laughs> <laughs> If you're claiming to be from the service, tree trimming, landscaping, we run into this one a lot. Your fence is falling down in the back, your neighbors, we need to get on this side of the, the house to fix your neighbor's fence because we can't reach it from this side. If you didn't order it, don't answer the door to the door. If you have any questions, it's a 911 call. They cannot charge you for a service you didn't call for. They do that a lot. Okay, well, if, uh, if you're refusing the service or the service was done in error, I need you to fill out this paperwork so that you know we be able to charge our feet to show up. All that's a scam. As you're filling out the form, that's going through that form. Your friends and neighbors are not sending people to you. If they are, you have bad friends and neighbors. So there's no referral sort of system where the neighbor, you'll knock on the neighbor's door and go, hey, Mary, we love this, go there. So once again, it's a double thing. Bottom line, don't answer your door. Any strange for any reason, call them. All right, a lot of these things they're embarrassed to be rude to the person at the door, and then they're embarrassed after it happened to call them. I would rather do a thousand of these things where it was legitimate than take one of these with really where family heirlooms, really expensive things are, are lost. That gold is melted down within a day. Um, they're almost untraceable and untraceable. And there are groups of people that do just this. Telemarketing scams. The police, fire, state troopers, men on fund ranks. That's what your taxes are for. Occasionally, it might be a special little thing, but they're not going to telemarket it for you. So if you get a phone call like that, that's a hang up. You ever give information over the phone on the internet? The way the dark web works is they sell data by data packets. So you can buy X amount of data packets. What's in there is you and some of your information. Very rarely is it complete. So what they need from you is the last piece of information. It could be an old cell phone number, it could be your date of birth, it could be your driver's license number. They need one more piece to fully, uh, take care of it. fully steal your identity. So don't give any information on the phone. So even if, like Merrill Lynch, I, I ran into this with them when I was talking to them on the phone, they called me because there was an issue with the uh, fund I had. They called me, but they wanted me to verify I was me by giving them my social security. Hmm. And I said, I can't do that. They're like, well, we're in a bind because I can't talk to you about this issue unless I know it's you. I go, well, I'm going to go online. I'm going to find your phone number. What's your name? And I'm going to call Merrill Lynch, and I'll get directed to you, and then you know it's me. So don't give them the last piece of information so you can that. Law enforcement does not uh, conduct uh, financial transactions on the phone. We don't take your money unless we're physically taking your money. The only time we're taking your money is either you're paying a fine for a ticket, local ordinance type thing, or somebody's supposed to that. Those are the only two things. And you do it by coming to the station. We never do anything over the phone that's transactional. All right? Fine has to be done in person, mortgage has to be done in person. That's kind of what I just pointed out. Hospitals do not charge you the phone for care of another person. They bill. So if your aunt, niece, cousin, they have all the right name, they know where they live, they have all the right stuff, and they're representing the fact that they immediately need $1,000 or they're going to have to refuse treatment in the ER. A, that's illegal in Illinois. And B, that's what's going to do. Gift cards? Nobody takes gift cards as payment. The IRS doesn't. We don't. Take your pen. I can't tell you times when we go to these frauds and we go in and we're like, we bought how many so many gift cards? So, and all they want is a little pen number on the back. 
They don't even need a physical car. So you have you buy the car, they tell you the, the pen over the phone, bam, it's gone. And there's no way to get it. IRS is everything through the mail. IRS is not going to call you out the IRS only calls you after you establish a relationship with an agent over an issue. Then those calls are only to set up time and dates to meet. Everything else is through the mail. Once again, if you're insurer, you call them back. Kind of like the Merrill Lynch thing. Don't, so, you know, Google calls you and says something about your email. You're like, okay, I guess this is my email. I'll go on the internet, I'll go on the phone book, or however you want to do it. I'll find the Google number, I'll call you. Don't take the number they gave you. It's just as bad as the number they called from. Lottery tax, out of your winnings, not tax you to win. We've had a lot of those. Get a call, you won $30,000, but you have to pay the $250 up front in Subway gift cards. That's all. If you win the lottery, they're taking the tax out of your winnings. I'm not taking the taxes first. Ever. And treat the guy at the door, treat, treat a call like the guy at the door. If you don't, if you don't ask for it, don't open it. Real simple. Kind of the same things with computer and email scams. Same principle, if you didn't seek, if you didn't ask for it, you didn't seek with it, don't interact with it. Something pops up and it's nothing to do with you, don't click on it. Never click a pop-up ad, even if it's something that looks legit. Go straight to it. So Amazon, sometimes if something pops up that says, you know, it has a product that you want from Amazon, go to Amazon directly. Don't do it like that, because that could be a trojan. And there's a lot in your computer that they can access to you just by interacting with them. Never click, link, uh, never click a link in email, access directly, same thing. Even though it says Merrill Lynch, if you click on it, you'll be sending it to a dummy site where they're taking your ID and they're taking your money and they're stealing information. No governmental organization uses gift cards as currency. Here, or Europe, or Africa, no government in the world transacts with gift cards. I don't know. I know we can. No, like I already said, there's no upfront money in quality sweepstakes. This is they send you the email where you, you, uh, you want it. Uh, unfortunately, agencies do not let your grandson contact you through email because they need bond or they have a limit. Never ever. ever. We sometimes we'll let them call from the station to go, to go get bond. Or we'll call, if we can't get a hold of that person, we'll call that agency and send one of their officers to not come to work to, to possibly do bond or the guys can spend money. But we never do it through email. If your computer gets held hostage, that one's getting a little less used, but it's the whole call this number, your computer's hostage. Unplug your computer, go get it to a professional, don't get that guy in. Nine times out of ten, it's not going to get fixed. So you just want to get your money and your computer's still working. Google will not send you a web message pop up warning you that there's a problem, you're trying to fix it. If you give them permission, now they're in your software, your computer. Now they're taking your software. Once again, the idea kind of always is with these things. If you didn't ask for it, you didn't seek it, you didn't know it was a problem, that should be a huge risk. Have a dedicated credit card for internet purchases that is really low. It's not linked to anything. So not a debit card, not linked to a checking account, not linked to any of those things. Have a standalone separate little credit card that has a $500 limit. Use that. That way, for whatever reason, that gets poached or taken. There's not much for you as a result of that. Romance scams are getting more and more popular. If you're not seeking someone or someone's, and someone seeks you, don't answer the door. It's an email, it's the same thing. It's kind of the same thing over and over again. How good this is. If they request money, it's always a scam. So always get out of jail, get out of the country, I'm being held by terrorists. I want to buy you a gift, I want to divorce my current person in order to come, come over with you. It, it's, if they ask for money, it's, it's, it, it's an automatic one. We did a health house one. If you can't meet them in person, there's always some boundary to keep you from meeting them in a public place with a friend in a safe place. Then they're not good people. Okay, it's a scam. We have a woman from Rolling Meadows who could not get her to stop. She was convinced that this guy from Bulgaria was real, and she ended up sending those people $65,000. Three payments of $22,000. Mm -hmm. 
Her family rolled in to try to convince her to stop doing it. We rolled in to try to convince her to stop doing it. Social services that we provide came in to try to stop her. Here's the thing, she's a healthy, functioning, mentally well adult. Unless it's domestic, you have to choose to be a victim. And she refused to choose to be a victim. So there's nothing we can do. So be ready for that. Find a way not to be lonely. I know that's a, that's a little callous, but find a way not to be lonely. You know, I understand that we have a lot of this in early matters where the men tend to go first and the women are alone and they're isolated because of our current society. Family's not around them, they're in the house by themselves. You need to take steps, however, it, it works out. We'll talk about that a little bit during the mental health part of this. <clears throat> find a way not to be lonely. That's their problem. Do a Google search on the picture, Google search the industry. Almost always are stock photos. Almost almost always. To be like, bam, then you'll see it's a stock photo. That's how you know it's a scam photo. Find another home address. You never give out your home address ever. Just out of the country around a million miles. If somebody outside the country, this is the wrong one that's scam don't do. If they're local, call the police department report as a scam. Because it probably is. If it's real, I would call you back over the phone and say, hey, uh, no, this is Bruce, uh, you can show us this place, and you can be this Bruce, it's everything you can represent. I would not be able to have a problem with it, very <coughs> Nine times out of ten, it's a fake address, I'm, I'm looking at it at the bottom. So then I call you back and say, this is a song. So, here's your first question. Mental safety. So, this is kind of an underappreciated thing. So it's more mental wellness, but it's mental safety. It's the idea that you, you're, you're supposed to be protecting your cognitive and emotional states also. So you can be the healthiest physical person, you can have be smart with scams, but if your headspace is bad, that's not safe. Self-isolation is a continued thing among the senior citizen community. There's a lot of people living by themselves in their house that at the very most they need to go to grocery stores. Don't do that. Find a way, you're not meant to be alone. Find community wherever you, you can. Whether it's a church, local senior center, Toronto Meadows has one, Pop has a couple, Park District, volunteer, Google <coughs> hobbies, whatever it is, make a connection. Don't do one on one connections, because that could go back to the previous one. But there's an organization for everything that you ever could possibly care about. And all these charities, Elder Works included, everybody needs bodies and everybody needs help. So form a community in any way you can. Being alone 24-7 is a dangerous thing. <coughs> Periodic to turn off the news, only forms you of the sensationalism. Creates a feeling that criminality is on the rise in, in local police water. And check out the local police water and stuff. And we're only met us, and, and we're at the best of channels. From the 19th to the 24th, we made four arrests on the way. Two were for um, driving while suspended, and two were retail theft. So, if you fear, and you're fear for, and you're staying in your home, or you're feeling fear in general, it's a mind game. There's study after study after study, perpetual fear will shorten your life. The mental state can be shown to reduce the time the body needs to heal, the amount of trauma experience in a bad situation. The lower the, lower the total recuperation period of mind and body. Understand that in a crisis, so going back to the, the physical stuff, in a crisis you're going to fight, you're going to flight, you're going to freeze. You're going to freeze. You're going to freeze. We're, we have extensive training as police officers not to freeze. And we freeze, but we freeze for a much shorter time because of all that training. We still freeze. Everybody's going to freeze. Don't let that take you out of the fight and don't let that track your mind. Prepare yourself ahead of time. Imagine a scenario that's going bad, and you pop into action. I know this sounds silly, but this is what golfers do, this is what big golfers do. They envision the outcome they wish to have. The batter manages to hit the ball, the golf manages the perfect strike over and over and over. Again. So that when they address the ball in real life, when they address the, the pitcher in real life, their already headspace is already good in order to perform the action. Do the same thing. Short your freeze time to where you're more operational so you can protect yourself. Create a warrior mindset. Have a mantra. Make this you. You have value. You're worth fighting for. There's no quit. May not win every fight, but your answer is a little bit to respect. Sacrifice yourself for others. Never be without honor. 
and the week will see your potential. Have this be part of you inside. You have purpose. These are kind of just basic principles to have a healthy life. You have a purpose. The longer you stay here, the more you serve that purpose. Whatever it is. You may not know. You're part of a long chain. Thousands of people you've never known are part of the reason you're here today. And you are the reason for future people living their lives that they'll never know. Being well, being active, being proactive, being part of the community, serving others. That will create excellent health. Love others more than yourself. Suffering has honor. People tend to see suffering as purpose. You can't sharpen your knife without taking something out. You are who you are because of what you've come through. I'm going to tell you, I really wish I learned a life lesson because of a positive outcome. Everyone who's seen a good life lessons from like, oh, why did I didn't understand that this horrible thing happened to me and now I know not to do that anymore. So, see suffering as honorable and fun. Treat others the way you should be treated in regards to their conduct. That's super hard. I'm bad at that. I'm working on it. Joy is a choice and happiness is a pursuit. Uh, my master's is through Adler School of Professional Psychology. Adlerian thought is if you make these choices over time, you'll suffer the consequences of depression and mental illness much less. And they have research about that. And it's the simple idea of joy doesn't come to you, happiness doesn't find you, it's what you choose to do. Focus on what you have and not what you lack. Always be happy. So, that was quick. So we're going to have a question and answer session after this in order to But I wish you all a long and happy life. Okay, you're probably not going to be a victim, but if you are, you do these things, you're going to be less of a victim, and you're going to have less of a victim. This is me. Everyone get a hold of me. Any questions? This is just a quick bio why maybe you should listen to me. I'm going to stick with that if you want. And for no reason at all, this is me teaching there to Anybody have any questions or anything about that? It's quick. Quicker than I thought it'd be. Well, not necessarily a question, just a comment. What I really liked about your presentation was very realistic because uh, what you said was, you know, the fear is important because a lot of times, you're right, if you see the news or you read the police thing in the paper, like we have a the local paper that puts the police department in there, and if, if that's all you're seeing, you're just thinking everywhere you go, you know, you're doing one of these things, and I really like this, the realistic way you just said, you know what, yeah, it is what it is out there, but you know, you don't have to be a part of it, you can rise above it, you can function without you know, getting all the and stuff. I, I kind of feel like the realistic way that you presented it. Sure. Uh. <laughs> um, I saw myself when you said about answering the door to a stranger. I don't want to be rude. That's it. So I really don't. I mean, that's just my personality, and I've been taught don't be rude to people. So I open the door. And I lived way out in the country, you know, a long time ago. And a guy walked up to my door. I'm by myself with two and a half acres. And I opened the door. And he just Fair walked out. And he was just, this was a door. We had our house up for sale, and it was a scam. They said it was for rent. And so this guy saw it on the internet and he drove up to our house to see you know what it looked like. And I, I said, our house is for rent. <laughs> it was for sale. He said, you know, and he said the price was very cheap. It was like five hundred dollars for rent. And you know we're on two and a half acres. It's <laughs> huge. Um, talk to that a lot of the B and B stuff yeah. ends up being scams. So somebody will just take a photo of somebody's house, yeah. put it on put on that, uh, they'll, they'll do the whole transaction. It's completely fraudulent. So well, now the guy's banging on the door, wondering why nobody's answering the door, finally gets somebody. Yeah. And now he thinks he got defrauded by the homeowner, but the homeowner was just picked up random. Yeah. See, when I was with a picture of the house being for sale, we took the picture of the sale and put it on the The sad things about this is a lot of these scams use your good intentions against you. You know, your, your need to feel polite, your need to interact with people. You, uh, you want your reputation to stay sterling. And so a lot of what they count on is if this happens to you, that you're too embarrassed to call my mom. And I cannot tell you how many times this happened where the son will visit 
you know, the daughter would visit or something, and all of a sudden mom's got the story, and it happened a couple months ago. And she was too embarrassed to call 911 because she got a visit of her and she feels so much. And they're using those things against her. So just, you can't approve her. And you know, they're total strangers, so if they get mad at you, so on. I just want to thank you again for your service, and thank you, Bob and Dad, for that. <laughs> you guys can go work.